Hello, and welcome to the Mr. 50mm YouTube channel. I'm Chris. For today's video, it's going to be a bit different. I don't really have a script for this, because uh, I just kind of worked on this today, and I didn't intend to make a video out of the topic. Uh, but here we have it. Uh, so if you have an older Olympus uh, mirrorless camera, like uh, one of the EPL 6s or older, or one of the uh, pens or pen minis, and the IBIS has broken, you may be tempted to fix it yourself. It turns out that a lot of these, if you look online, suffer from like one failure. And that primary failure is the nylon gear in one of the IBIS axes just kind of gives up. Uh, the solution to it that is fairly quick and easy is to actually find the one that's broken. It's usually the one that's like kind of moving in or easy to move with like a pair of tweezers when you take the thing apart. Uh, but essentially, all you gotta do is do a dab of uh, crazy glue on top of that and uh, make sure it dries and it'll fix itself back to the shaft and your IBIS should be working again for a little while. I'm not sure how long the fix will last, but it is like a reasonable solution. Chances are the actual gear has probably developed a crack and therefore, therefore it's not gripping the uh, shaft very well. Ergo, crazy glue is needed. However, just wanted to bring up that while I was doing this repair on my own EPL5, you may have remembered in a previous video I mentioned that mine had no functioning IBIS. Uh, I realized that there are a couple things about this assembly of this series of cameras that appear to be pretty common across cameras and kind of missed in the tutorials and or videos online. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to post or link to the references I use for how to disassemble the Olympus. Uh, there's a video on YouTube of someone else that did it and they actually ran across the same problem that I did. Uh, and a link to the LifePix website that has uh, pretty detailed pictures on the disassembly. But again, there are two or three things that I want to go over in this video. Right, so here's one of the first things I want to go over in the video. So again, mine is the EPL5, uh, and I want to just go over the some of the disassembly stuff that's kind of missed by the tutorials or any of the guides that people have posted online. So when you are disassembling the camera, disassembling this is actually not the worst in the world. However, it's not the most pleasant. Uh, something to make a note is this hot shoe there, right? When you're disassembling the camera, you will be removing a bunch of these screws, a bunch of screws from here, and then it'll come time to actually lever this thing out. A thing to be aware of though is that the way that this rear case is attached to the main body of the camera, if you... Uh, aren't careful, you can very easily destroy this part of the hot shoe, like I did on mine. My hot shoe, this part, no longer works. Not a massive deal for me as I really, I have the EVF permanently jammed on here, but might be for some people. And now I'll actually show you why, because you can take apart this little piece of metal sitting on top of the hot shoe, and you can see what I'm talking about. Here we go. All right, so I've gotten this thing up. So, let's see if you can see that. Ooh. Okay, so that hot shoe there is the fix by four screws. When you remove the four screws, you'll reveal uh, how the uh, front and back of the case are um, connected. And it turns out there's a little bracket on the back side here that you know, if you're not pressing this hot shoe portion and you uh, start levering it up, there's a really good chance that this entire pin assembly will lever up with the rear case. And that is what's gonna tear the uh, flex cable connecting the hot shoe. So pro tip number one, when you're levering your uh, rear case out, just have a finger on the hot shoe while you pry. And if you do that, the hot shoe will stay in place while the rear case should eventually pop out. 
and you'll have a functioning hot shoe at the end of it. Hooray! Okay, so the second thing I want to talk about. Before you uh, remove the sensor from the camera, beware. So there are four screws that affix the sensor into the frame of the camera. Uh, underneath the four screws and the assembly, there are eight washers. Now, almost guaranteed when you get the camera apart, some of these, if not all of them, are gonna fall out. Don't worry though, it's eight washers, two per screw. Uh, basically, as long as you get it back in the correct order, you should be good to go. Uh, put a, at least one, one thick washer and one thin washer. That's, that's it. Uh, another thing though to keep in mind is that when you take the sensor out uh, and you eventually, you inevitably do drop one of these washers, like just like carefully grab the sensor, press it against the body and then tilt the camera body upside down. Don't drop the sensor. Of course, there's still at least one ribbon cable connected. So it's going to tear if you do that. Uh, but you, you are going to need to take the washers out and, you know, set them aside for, for uh, later when you reinstall. Uh, the third tip is when you do reinstall it, uh, at this point, they're just like there to space the sensor. Uh, it's really annoying. Like if you are not really good at hand-eye coordination, chances are when you reinstall, the washers are going to shift, they're going to fall. It's not going to be fun. So. In order to avoid this hassle, just grab a tiny dab of crazy glue and glue the little washers into place uh, so that when you screw the thing back in, you won't drop the washers. That's gonna be, honestly be the easiest way to go. Okay, last tip. So reassembling this thing is actually kind of annoying just because there's so many flat flex cables and I think the worst one for me was the one that attached the actual display uh, to the main board. And that's because that's like the second last one or the last one you're gonna have to do. Uh, just in order to make it a little bit easier, you'll notice that on the back of the uh, rear housing, the cable is taped down. Uh, and if you just undo that tape carefully, you'll get a little more space to put the flat, flat flex back in. Uh, and hopefully it'll give you just enough space to be able to jam back in and then complete your reassembly. Anyways, those are all the tips I can think of when working on the uh, Olympus series of cameras. It's really annoying, but hopefully when you repair your iBiz, it'll be worth it. Oh, uh, and uh, that's, so that's all for the tips. Uh, let's have a look at the video that I took of me disassembling the camera. Now, it's not at a great angle and it's not really useful because I get, get in the way a lot of the times. The video was more for me to figure out how to backtrack if I need to, needed to uh, refer to something. Uh, so yeah, I apologize for not having great shots or great angles for this, uh, but hopefully maybe you'll find it a little bit useful.
Okay. And with those tips in hand, uh, I'm going to post the link to the video of someone who'd done the repair on their EPL2. And yeah, they had also broken their hot shoe uh, mount. And I'm going to, again, like I said, post the link to the Life Pixel, which has a description how to tear down a lot of these cameras. Uh, otherwise, yeah, let me know how your repair goes. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time. Bye.